Hey everyone, we're going to go over the uh, second um, HDA that I've uh, created and this one is for creating uh, hair on animated geometry which sounds relatively simple and if you're coming from Cinema 4D it's pretty simple to set up there but it's a little more tricky in, uh, in Houdini so and you know for me I found myself uh, needing to set this up uh, hair on animated geometry frequently and I had to you know figure out the setup and then I would go back uh, a while later and forget how I had set it up and it was just kind of a pain so I set up this HDA to kind of take out some of that setup work and I'm gonna walk you through how it works uh, here so um, there's three inputs you'll see the first is for your geometry so we're just gonna do a really basic example we're gonna set up a sphere and we're we need to have it uh, be animated um, so we can you know ensure that everything's working so we're just gonna use a, a mountain node and and yeah when I say animated I mean it works with deform like geometry where the surface is deforming not just uh, you know transforming the position and things like that so I want to show that with the uh, the mountain node um, so let's uh, let's set that up. So you see the surface is you know is is undulating and moving a lot, and so we need uh, our hair to follow that motion. So uh, we'll plug that into the first input of the G the hair animator. And if you look, it says plug the animated geo into the first input, the collision geo into the second. So usually uh, for this workflow, you're probably just going to plug the same geometry into the collision geo you can also you know merge in something else like another sphere or whatever merge that in and uh, use other collision geometry but for this we're just going to use this like so it collides with the surface and then the second is a or the third input is a uh, for your pop attract geo so if, if you want to place something around your uh, object and have it be and have the hair be attracted to that you can do that so i'll set this up and we'll take a look at that um, in a second but for now we'll just uh we'll come back to that so we'll go to our hair animator you can see just immediately it generates hair and by default it is uh the length is randomized so because randomized length is on by default and so you can change the the length parameters um, you can change the density the initial density of the hair uh, you know you don't need it to be so high for the base density because what happens at the end uh, of it is uh, it is re basically like resampled and a bunch more points are cloned on to uh, the hair so we can see there's a final density number here and a final density visualizer uh, switch here so if we turn that on we can see what it's gonna look like at the at the end stage so let's crank this up and we can see it's much thicker um, at the end so the base density is just what's going to be simulated so you do want to keep this value relatively low and then just up res it at the end using this uh, this function um, the hair noise mask is basically just generating a noise map on your geometry uh, and telling the uh, telling it where to generate the hair just using a, a noise um, so let's uh, let's let's merge in our input geo so we can see um, so we can see it on the surface rather than just having our hair by itself and we'll turn off the plane so, the, so we can see Okay, so now we can see that with our um, with our input geometry as well. So if we scrub through, we can see it's working. And you know, for for some for some applications, you know, this might work just as it is. You know, customizing these functions and um, things like that. But we also have the ability to um, to simulate it with this uh, with this HDA just built into it using Vellum. So let's uh, let's just turn on the noise mask so I can show you what that is. So if we turn on the noise mask, you can see that something happened. Um, it uh, it uh, reduced the density of our hair quite a bit. And then if we change some parameters like the noise size um, and 
the noise min and max, you can see that we're starting to get some areas that have hair and some that don't. Um, and so this is just, you know, if you want a quick way to uh, just have a, have a noise mask control where the hair density is, um, this is just a built-in um, way to to do that. So uh, it's, 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 you know, sort of limited in the controls, you know, that you have right here, but it's, it's, you know, easy to use if you, you know, if you just want to have something quick, quickly set up. And then obviously, you know, it'll look, it'll look different once the, uh, once the final um, amount of hair is, is scattered on it. And then uh, before we, before we hop into the simulation too, you can see we have a couple more options for uh directing the look of the hair so we have frizz which would just add waviness to the length of the hair and you can randomize certain aspects of that and then you also have uh clumping so you can see as i as i adjust this the um the hair will clump more or less together and then if clumping is on you can also uh you can also use curling so it, the clumping has to be on for the cl curling to work so if we do that, you can see that we can get uh, some nice curls on the hair as well. Um, so yeah, a lot of tools to uh, to just adjust, you know, um, how your how your hair is gonna look and how it's gonna kind of be scattered across the geometry. So we'll turn the noise mask off for now and the final visualizer as well, and then. Uh, let me show you the vellum section as well. So the vellum sim is off by default, so you just want to turn that on if you want uh, if you want uh, the simulated uh, hair. And then gravity is on by default. You can set that to whatever you want. Um, there is a noise that is on by default as well. You can turn that on or off. Um, oh, I I'll fix this. It should just be zero to one. Um, but, uh, and the attract, uh, like we talked about, the pop attract is on by default. So you can turn that on or off. We can turn that off for now. Um, and then, uh, yeah, let's just take a look at what it looks like just by default. So you can see um, by default it works and it runs really fast. Um, so our hair is colliding with our geometry and moving along with it and being affected by gravity. So let's turn off the gravity and let's turn on the noise. And so, yeah, we, now we've got just noisy hair being blown all over and it's still colliding with the, uh, with the surface geometry. And then if we go back to our base controls and turn on final density visualize, we can see what it will look like with the, the final density. Um, and um, then yeah, let's, let's throw in a pop attract geometry as well. So we'll want to put this, uh, attract activation to one and it will be attracted to the points, um, of this, uh, of this object. So, uh, let's see if that has an effect at an attract force of one. Uh, not really. So let's turn down, let's just turn off the noise so we can see this. Let's turn this to five and, okay. So you can see how it's being drawn up towards this uh, this sphere. And if we moved this or animated it around, it would follow that um, as well. So yeah, just uh, again, like not it's it's not meant to be the most customizable solution ever, but for a lot of uh, situations, this will probably get you most of the way to where you need to go for an animated uh, or a, a hair setup on animated geometry. Like for me, this would probably, you know, fit a lot of situations. Um, and then uh, for this, you can um, you can then obviously just go into your Redshift tag and render these um, these curves as hair to render them really quickly. That's the I think the the fastest way to to render all this um and uh 
you know, you can start with a really low base density and, and get and crank this up, this final density value to get some really thick hair and everything works is going to work really fast. So, um, yeah, I think uh, that that pretty much covers everything that's in here. And uh, yeah, this will be free for all patrons. Um, just use your code on Gumroad and uh, let me know if you have questions or if you find something that is, you know, broken or, you know, that you think I should implement into this HDA. Um, and yeah, I hope it's useful. All right. Catch you in the next one. Bye.